So, g'day, um, Dave here with Out and About with Dave, and um, this is a section within the website and blogs that I'm doing on Camp Kitchen, and I'm quite fortunate because I've got my uh, great mate here, Travis. G'day. And we're going to start uh, up on the Camp Kitchen and talking about things. Um, firstly, on the location where we are, this here is the Brisbane River behind us, and um, John Oxley, when he came up here from Sydney in 1823, he came up the River, Brisbane River, as far as here. Um, and the hill behind us is actually called Termination Hill. So that was the end of his travels up the Brisbane River. He then went back and reported how great Brisbane was and they decided to set up Brisbane as a town. And they came up and landed at Redcliffe and they, that was the start of their, um, their, t their, their city, their town. They were setting up the penal colony. colony. And Oxley came up the river again and spent the night on the other side of the river here on Termination Plains. So uh, then he carried on up the river a little bit further. But there you go, we'll do more on the river in another blog, but this one's all about cooking. So I've thrown to Travis. Um, I've known Travis for a little while now. I think we've been friends on Facebook for eight years, I think I said yeah. the other day. And um, Travis has some good experience, military experience, but also with um, tag-alongs and things like that. And he's done all the cooking and things. I had the, I had the, the uh, I had the benefit of going out to tag-along with Travis last year. We went across the Simpson up to Alice Springs and that. And his style of cooking and the way he cooks and his approach to cooking really fascinated me. Um, so maybe uh, rather than me prattling on, if you want to just say how you, how the, um, the cooking we did, you did. Yep. Uh, we had a meal <coughs> options and things like that and just sort of introduce it. Yeah. Um, so the way I would structure meals um, when I was doing tag alongs, which I don't do a great deal of anymore, is uh, breakfast is essentially continental. So it's very easy to throw a continental breakfast, a bit of toast and cereal together. Um, so there's not a lot of fuss in the mornings. Yep. It's just something you get out of the way so you can get on the road and, and pack your tents and do that sort of stuff. Um, lunch, I did as a buffet style in my own way, um, where I would pre-prepare eight to 10 different um, cold things, whether they be tomatoes or lettuce or coleslaw or whatever else but cheese uh, capsicum yeah, yeah a, a selection of items that you can then pick from and each day that would slowly rotate so as uh, number eight would f end um, in the in the bucket so to speak you go okay well I'll not do that dish again that will become um, a can of corn the next day and then the, not something else so it's a slowly evolving and changing so you're not just having a ham and cheese sandwich every day um, but oh, that's you, certainly not what yeah, we didn't do yeah, that, no, yeah. no. Um, but you keep a couple of staples there, like I always do coleslaw because it's a great... For me, coleslaw is excellent because a cabbage keeps really well. I was going to say, you make your own coleslaw, coleslaw don't yeah. you? Mm. Um, and like a whole cabbage, if I do the canning stock route, I can take two or three small cabbages and they'll last the whole trip. There's very little you have to do to keep a cabbage. As long as it's cool and out of the sun, it doesn't need to be in a fridge and all that all right. hubbub until you cut it. Because mm, fridge space is very important. Yes. As is, and I'll hopefully get onto that later on, the, the reliability. You know, if you rely on the fridge and the custard hits the fan, yes. um, you, you, you're stuffed. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, over time I've developed things or found products um, such as Edgel makes various canned salads, those sort of things that you don't have to rely on that fridge space is a really good deviation for one mm, day. Mm. Um, it might not be the best product, but that that concept of change really helps um, make lunch less laborious. Yeah, yeah. Um, so with dinner, what I would do is I would alternate daily between a main meal and an entree, um, normally a soup because a soup's quite easy to get together um, things like a chicken noodle soup, you can you can bang that together with dry ingredients and just water. There's not a lot of effort that has to go into that, but it just breaks things up a bit. And then the next day I would do a, a dessert. Yes, yeah. Um, and sometimes the entree might be dim sims or yes. something else. Yeah, because you had a freezer in the, in the truck you had yep. and things like that, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so, um, and the main meal, I mean, you, uh, I remember one of the meals we had in the middle of the desert was like nachos. So that yep. was a can of, and you told me what was in it, we just had the nachos chips, which again, out, yep. of, out of the stores, yep. um, the tomato paste. Yep. Uh, so yeah, well, 
the recipe is very simple. It's um, corn chips, and there's a really easy way to do that gluten free as well because it's a gluten free corn yep. chip, which is just a plain corn chip as long as it doesn't have the flavour on it. That's gluten free, so um, I always carry those because it's bound to be one. somebody. Mm. Yeah. Um, that then a can of baked beans over that, then the, the jar of salsa that you buy, and you can buy it hot, medium, or yeah. whatever that suits you. Um, and then just grated cheese over the top, bang it in the camp oven, and it's very, very quick to cook, very tasty. It's got everything. It's got the proteins yes. and carbs and everything you could want, and a bit of flavour and difference. And, and we'll get into how you bang it in the in the camp oven later <laughs> on, because I I do intend. Um, probably teaching, uh, probably giving advice on more techniques rather than in a pinch of this and a pinch of that and all that sort yep. of stuff. It's all the techniques of how to use the camp oven. Mm. Um, and I think it's fair to say, and you might make, some, make a comment on it, that when you're out driving all day and then you go for a camp, or even if you camped up all day and you want something for the night's meal, it doesn't have to be the top shelf uh, cordon bleu type stuff. Sometimes a sausage in a piece of bread yeah, is, is yeah. what you want, but you know the nachos. You say baked beans, and other people might say, "Oh, I can do better than that." But mm. why make life more complicated? I suppose. Yeah, um, you don't have to have complex food to have good food. Mm. Yeah, complexity and flavour are not inextricably linked, so you you don't have to have one to have the other. Um, and and you can put a twist on that. You could put whatever you want you could put refried beans in there or you can mm. put a kidney a bean side. in there or, or mm. whatever to make it your own without making it a really complex process yes um, yeah. and you just said then make it your own I, I, I do believe that um, camp cooking or in the camp kitchen can be very much a, like a hero status you can elevate yourself to a hero status yep. and uh, and others um, will almost worship you at the end of, the, of a meal. It's mm. a bit different to going out to a restaurant in the fact that you know, you've cooked this thing up from basics and you've used basic equipment, a fire, uh, mm. to make this thing. Well, a, a meal that comes to mind for me was probably the second year that I was running my tagline company um, and I just did pancakes. And it was just flour and water and me being me to mix that flour and water mix, so I used a Ryobi drill. That's right. Um, so a drill and you put a thing in it and it beats it very fast and I cook that and everyone's going oh what mix is that and what <laughs> what specific ingredient did you do different and I'm just like it's flour and water <laughs> and a drill yeah, it, it, yeah. it doesn't have to be something super super special it's uh, just self-raising flour and water yeah so when you've done trips, um, and I've talked to you before about people going up to an isolated place and they've got all their frozen meals all lined up and all nicely packed mm -hmm. and they've got a menu sheet for each day, would, have you ever done that or would you ever do that? Um, look, I'm, even at home, I don't go, I'm going to have, on Wednesday I'm going to have it this Thursday, I have a larder and at about three o'clock in the afternoon or four o'clock or whenever I get home, I walk up and go, okay, that's what I've got, I'll make uh, that. Yeah. And, that, and that's how I operate in the bush as well, because some days you want to sit there and faff about and make a paddle over, and some days you, you just want jelly. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and I, that, I Or you pull into camp late and suddenly that plan's yeah. gone, so we'll just yeah. do up a nachos or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the nachos is great in that it's a great one to have in reserve mm. for that night that mm. you pull in a little bit later because... The only thing you need to pull out of the fridge is the cheese. Mm. Um, and I actually freeze the grated cheese, but that's a personal choice thing. Yep. But it, it doesn't take forever, and it's one you can just have up your sleeve. You don't go, oh, Wednesday we're having nachos and we're going to have yeah. guacamole and yeah. we're going to make everything. And on but, Wednesday you pull in at 4 o'clock into camp before you suddenly you've got people at 7 o'clock and all they're getting yeah. is nachos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, one of the one of the great meals I had, and um, again we're going to detail because uh, I've ate as a kid. Is silver side. You did have a corn silver side one mm -hmm. one breakfast. Uh, you cooked it up, oiled it up, then we put it into a thermal pot, and then that cooked all throughout the day on the journey. Yeah. And then that gave you a meal with a white sauce which you whipped up. Yep. Probably with a roby drill again. Yeah. Um, I bet you did. <laughs> but we did have sliced meat. We had sliced corned beef the, next, the next day. day. Yeah. You know. Yep. Yeah, a lot of people get very excited about what they're going to have for their lunch meat, and I don't always do that. I, I tend to not eat myself bread yeah. when I'm camping because um, it takes up a lot of volume in your car if you want to take two loaves of bread, and you've got to 
think about how you keep bread. So generally, unless you're keeping it for one or two days yeah. and you're going to use the lot, you need to think about refrigerating it or keeping it cool or doing whatever yeah. else. So I, as you well know, I do wraps. Yeah, most the, the pita of the breads. Time. Yeah, yeah mm. pita breads and, and pitas and those sorts of older um, grain foods that last. Um, because you can you can have a packet of wraps and throw it in the car for a month. Yeah, and, and they take up that much room. They yeah, take up yeah, no room. Yeah. Um, it does take a bit of adapting to it. If you're a sandwich person, it might not work for you. Yeah. Um, but you might work out a way of doing sandwiches better or worse or, or whatever yeah. else. But for me, the thing I like about a wrap for lunch is you lay the wrap out, you go to that buffet that we were talking about earlier, and you go, well, I have a little bit of this, a little bit of that, yep. and you, you're not tied to sliced meat. You can go... Right, well, we had chicken satay last night. Yep. So I'll bang spoon a little bit of rice and spoon some satay on there. And that's something that's... And you curl up the end and it doesn't, doesn't leak everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, th there's always yeah. beetroot. Yeah, there's always <laughs> beetroot for that. Yeah, but you're out bush. Yeah. And I suppose, probably just to finish off on this bit, and we can explore other things in, the, in other conversations, um, don't panic. There's always a pub nearby. That's right. Yeah, it, I don't know how many times I've pulled into somewhere and gone, you know what, we've had a terrible day on the road, we've had 15 flat tyres and somebody's car overheated and blah, blah, blah. Everyone's that stressed. Um, so they set up their camp and they see that that you've gone in, you've ordered a bunch of meals in the pub for them, um, and that's not necessarily how it'll work on a day no, no, for, no. for this, but um, the idea of going in there, getting away from that normal routine and supporting that local community because... Yes. You don't want to travel through somewhere, you want to travel to somewhere. Yes. Um, and be part of what's going on out there. Yeah. Now, there's so much in a, pub, you know, like in a country pub. I'm not talking about the pub culture necessarily. I mean, you can travel and go to a pub and not have a beer and all that sort of thing. People will steer away from that. Yep. But uh, there's no reason at all why you can't get bangers and mash or a, um, a chicken chicken snee or something like yeah, that. The yeah, the old RSL yeah. meals of yeah. something very quick yeah. and easy. Yeah. And yeah. All right. an arm and a leg. Well, there's probably lots more we can talk about, um, and uh, we can certainly chase up that later on. Uh, the the equipment we I want to cover off on, and as I said about techniques and how to use things, uh, we'll discuss thermal cookers. We'll get into like your dream pots. Uh, we'll get into camp ovens, uh, frying pans, fr flat grills, uh, flat plates, um, saucepans, uh, and and how they're a little bit different if you like in the bush environment but um, really no different to a kitchen. Um, but, uh, and I think it's important to finish on the fact that no matter what you do in the bush, you probably will burn it at some stage. I think cooks and chefs, they call that caramelizing. Um, but the other thing is, and I caution you now, is don't try and repeat the recipes you make at home. No. They'll never ever taste the same. They never will, they can't. They're just, it's just the whole ambience of being outside. There's a good French word. Mm. Um, it's the sitting down at the end of the day, sitting around that fire, all sharing the elements. It may even be raining, but it's just, I still remember a, a, meal, a snack we had on the side of the river down the Timbara. Um, it was raining and we had uh, red wine and um, chocolate chip biscuits, which was fantastic. <laughs> so anyway, we'll finish off there yep. um, and we'll catch up again with uh, what's in the camp kitchen with Travis and myself and um, yeah, hope you enjoyed that and uh, I think people always say follow that thing down the bottom but I never know where it is or how oh, to find it. Up here it's up there. There's one up here and subscribes and bells. And <laughs> so anyway, whatever it is, follow us and um, yeah, we'll take it from there. Thanks Trav, great, Thanks, uh, great chatting. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll do more. Thank you. See you Cheers. again. Very good.